Hey, peace world. Thanks for pressing play on another <clears throat> Pay Me No Mind sports and entertainment video. Uh, my name is Wood. Please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button if you uh, dig the way any information, uh, breaking news, headlines, stories, subjects are being broken down, recapped, reviewed, analyzed, so on and so forth. And I'm going to get right into it with some bite down boxing talk. Uh, obviously, last night was the first, or well, was the last night of ES, top rank on ESPN's summer series uh this is boxing it had a couple different names for it but all the action that was at the bubble inside the bubble with the mgm grand in las vegas as well as um and i just completely forgot what i was gonna say but um oh the tuesday thursday situation that's the end of that so i'll get into that um two quick uh two quick side notes um, you know, I read this piece on boxing scene from Lyle Fitzsimmons burst in ESPN's bubble and, um, you know, who am I to question him? And, but, you know, the people that want to attack, like boxing just doesn't have many, um, uh, can't think of the word. It just doesn't have many friends, you know. It doesn't have many advocates. Um, so on, basically, that's that's it. It, it. Boxing just doesn't have any advocates, and I thought it was a hit piece. Um, and I tell you, when people, in my opinion, are kind of full of it, and when I kind of tune it out, um, you know, for you to talk about, for you to mention several of the issues with what ESPN tried to do the past five to six weeks. But you you don't say anything about any of the highlights, any of the good aspects of it. You know the the nights when there were good fights. Adam, I mean uh, Adam Lopez's win over what was my man's name, Coria. You know was a good fight. The work that uh you know seeing a big uh you know a future heavyweight contender or you know a a, a, a promising heavyweight in Jared Anderson. The fight with um. With uh, Contreras, his win over um, Rolando Vargas, that was a damn good fight for two guys with both of them. Uh, Contreras had ten wins, I think, but um, that was that was a, a oh, and then Saucedo and Fredrickson was a good fight. was a was a damn good fight, and there were a couple of others. Uh, the Clay Collard situation, um, you know. Taking out Kaminsky, coming back and beating, the, knocking the second guy out. Um, who else was out there? I mean, it, it, it was a couple moments here and there that were pretty decent. And then last night's card, everything that they tried to do, which the article came out before that. And then to make no mention of the fights that were lost to COVID, you know, to positive COVID tests or false positive COVID tests. Um, Fitzsimmons also complained about the, the, uh, the call, the commentary, how the fights were called. I've seen people complain about this much time be, you know, basically nobody can do anything. That's, that's the whole thing in boxing. Everybody that's in boxing and trying on, on the supplier side, uh, or providing, you know, providing the fights for us, they can do nothing. They can do nothing right. Um, but to, to to and then to compare two two more things, to compare it to what the UFC did, he mentioned that the last card that the UFC had uh, before moving to the Fight Island thing, um, it did it averaged over um, one million views. Okay, I mean again, there's a broader audience there. Um, I never saw it. it. The UFC and boxing, it gets into some demographic talk and the preferences, uh, you know, and 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 preferences and tastes of certain groups and what doesn't appeal to these type these groups and whatnot. Okay, boxing has its work to do, no doubt. Um, but then to you know. 
would they have had to, would there have been a certain did we don't know if if Bradley and and Andre Ward we don't know if they objected to going into the bubble and being there for 47 days such as the uh the production staff we don't know if that was part of it um and then I just didn't see them do a I, I didn't see them do a horrible job and I think also with them providing fights, there was going to be some some negatives to it, or some uh, or some uh, some some noticeable differences in the presentation. Because if you've looked at all of the shows that are doing, uh, you know, home based stuff, all all across TV, all of this stuff is is different. So it's to me, it's no like. Do you realize the time that we're in, the moment that we're in? So I just thought Fitzsimmons, you know, you get on there and get your get your your shots off, but again, um, it's kind of ignorant to everything that we're in the middle of. And I don't think Top Rank was like, "Here's excellent boxing. Here's the best product that we can give you," but like we we're trying to do something. We have people working. We're we 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 are getting people to work. Cut men trainers. Uh, you know, and fighters. Some guys got on TV to take advantage of these moments and to kind of raise their profile and whatnot. Um, some guys that I thought I would have seen on here didn't participate. But again, when it comes to understanding boxing, nobody has the the uh, the patience for anything, for nothing, you know. And then, and then to just to, to focus on the fact that, or to not focus on the fact or mention, you know, the, the, the business model of boxing, we're trying to get some of these bigger names to fight. Uh, the fact that you'd have to do something, you'd have to get like some baseline to how can we even put fights on with the testing and the COVID situation. We got to have some some place to see what we're dealing with before we can even commit to big money, you know, commit money to big fights in the future, whether it be without crowds or not. Like you had to start somewhere. So I, you know, I kind of, I salute top rank for jumping out here and doing it. We see today showtime is, um, you know, showtime is going to announce six or seven, eight fights or something cards that they have coming up. So that's dope. That that press conference is at uh, noon. Uh, the other big thing that I was going to mention, uh, kind of my side point, you know, rest in power to uh, Travel Maison. Maison. Um, but again, you know, is is a promoter? Is that is 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 it is it a uh, just a standard cost of the business that? Um, that promoters should take care of the funeral, the funeral arrangements and funeral expenses of all fighters. Um, is that, should that, should that just be a given? I don't recall anybody pressing anybody in the media, excuse me, new media, Instagram, Twitter. I don't recall anybody being too concerned about what, what how uh Debella Entertainment contributed to um the passing, you know, to, to how the 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 passing of uh Patrick Day, whether or not they chipped in or picked up the tab. I don't recall that. I don't recall anybody being up in arms about it. And it seems like with what the track record is of Golden Boy, it's low hanging fruit and the low hanging fruit pickers ran off with they didn't do this. Um, now the one thing here is that maybe it's, it's, uh, it's not really debatable that, that golden boy hadn't done a whole lot with Maison. So it's, it's questionable, you know, whether or not they, he earned enough money, uh, you know, was put in the right situations to earn enough money to have been in a better situation financially to maybe where this was mitigated somewhat. But, um, I just think, you know, we nobody, a lot of the people that I see talking, running with the stories and this, this criticism, um, 
completely uh, oblivious to what the margins are for uh, you know promoters in in throwing these fights and trying to you know when you have 60 70 fighters underneath you and you might have guys you might have fighters males and females that are less than 5 fights less than 8 fights where you're paying some kind of monthly stipend or some kind of living expenses for these guys to even get to earning money um are you as a promoter are you working with your guys at all to uh to educate them on how to plan for situations like this. Cause you know, if you if you got guys on Instagram and on their social media with the money phones and, and walking on, you know, and standing around with, you know, bands of cash and everything, you know, if you do if you're doing all of that, my expectation is that you take care of some of, you know, the real stuff in life, such as uh these types of matters, if something were to go wrong, rainy day type stuff. Um, so again, should they have contacted the family, golden boy, should they have contacted the family and, uh, asked, you know, whether assistance was needed? Probably. Um, right now with an organization with that many fighters, their fighters not fighting, um, them, them not having any, any, any events going off the, the, uh, the extra burden that will be out there as these, as these, uh, as these organizations get back to work and what they might, you know, the sunken costs and whatnot that they might have. That, that's, that's, it's some things to wonder about. It really is. Um, You know, but like I said, the people that wanted to run with it the way that they wanted to run with it, it was there for it. <laughs> Getting to last night's card, Oscar Valdez, the 10 round uh, TKO versus Jason Velez. Uh, with, with, and, and please check out the write up that I did on it at bitedownboxing.com. That's out there. It was up last night. But Valdez, you know, he looked, um, he didn't look great. You know, he, he, he missed a lot. I, and I don't even know if that punch. That uh, comp you box, for him to have been backing up all night, as much as I saw him swinging and missing, uh, to be double up on uh, Velez, who was busier, who looked busier. Um, not saying that everything that Velez threw was was landing, but to be doubled up like that by the shorter fighter on on punches landed, I don't know. But, you know, Valdez, the power carried the way for him getting the knockdown in the fifth round and then the two two more knockdowns in the tenth. Uh, you know, when you have that type of, uh, when you can erase, you know, bad moments and bad stretches, that's a good thing. But, um, again, coming out, coming back from this situation, when was the guy able to work? What was the sparring like? Um, what was he doing, you know, in March and, and April, even parts of May, you know, who knows how professional these guys were being. And maybe uh, we saw some glimpses of why he had the slow start. But again, to take on a Burchell, you know, things look tricky. Um, Berlanger up at super, I thought that fight was at super middleweight. They have it on box rate as light heavy. First round, 62 seconds to stop uh, Eric Moon. I kind of didn't understand what Moon did. But again, what, what, where was Moon training? What kind of, you know, how disciplined was he in March and April and May? Uh, maybe even June. You don't know what. I mean, he looked like he was in pretty decent shape. But after he kind of blew his load, uh, you know, in the first 25 seconds, and once Berlanger started walking to him, Things changed drastically, and then to go back and lay on the uh, to lay on the ropes and be hunted the way that he was with the five, you know, four or five punch combo and the two right hands up top to drop him and stop him. Eh. But good win for Berlanger, fourteen KOs, and, and you know, in the first round, fourteen wins. We see what happens with him at light heavyweight. Dog Bay against Chris Avalos. I thought it was a fairly decent. Um, Re return after 14 months 
two, you know, 24 rounds of action and two losses to Emmanuel Navarrete. Uh, it was good to see Dog Bay boxing a little bit at times. Um, you know, he was pushed by Barry Hunter to do certain things. You can say you get Avalos out of there, but you know Avalos was a guy is a guy that he he can fight and take punishment and and, and fight through pain, and you know uh, Dog Bay just didn't break down his spirit to get him out of there quickly, but um I thought you know th there was some little things getting squared up, uh you know he, I think he went for the the the, the uppercut uppercut from outside lead a lead you know uppercut. Uh, it's certain things that you wouldn't be able to get off with other fighters of a certain caliber, but get back in the win column, you get the stoppage. He's still in. He can still looks. He still looks like he wants to be an exciting fighter. I think that's a good thing, and uh, he just continued to work. Um, I thought it wasn't too bad. Kim Clavel and Natalie Gonzalez. It wasn't a, it wasn't a bad fight whatsoever. That was a hell of a left hook that knocked all the spit out of uh, Gonzalez's mouth. But uh, Clavel gets the uh, you know the, uni uh, the unanimous decision. I thought it was a pretty good fight. I'll be honest. I didn't include that in my write up. I came back from a uh, from my bike ride and was was trying to regroup and was just watching that one honestly. So it was no disrespect to the women. And then also Elvis Rodriguez, um, they had that one listed at welterweight. I thought it was 100. They were both at 141 pounds. It's crazy how these uh, lower level fights and, and when you're at the prospect level, you know, the, the teams agree to just fight wherever. So both guys were 141 and three quarter pounds or actually a cost was at half. But uh, Rodriguez, another good performance. That uh that one two combination with the left hand through the guard of a cough. Uh I like what I'm seeing from Rodriguez. And uh, you know, it's dope to have Freddie Roach with a guy out there that's uh that shows some potential. Kind of reminds me of um Explosivo, I think, Machado. Different kind of fighter, different kind of fighter. But um it'll just be interesting to see how Rodriguez progresses, you know. Um you look good against these types of guys. Okoff was four, two, and one going into it with I think two, excuse me, two knockouts. But um, Rodriguez just looks, you know, he looks like he's an educated fighter. Um, good height for the division. You know, looks like he's in good shape, pretty athletic, uh, and is hungry, and, and seems to be hungry and seems to be aggressive. So I, I like what I'm seeing from Rodriguez. Like I said, it's a lot of young kids. Uh, young bodies in there at a super lightweight that keeps the division, the, the next two years of the division, looking impressive, uh, in my opinion. Um, so that was it, man. I, I mean, I thought it was, I thought it lived up to its billing. Um, I mean, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more work from Berlanga, but I'm, I'm just not sure what, you know, what Eric Moon was thinking. And, um, you know, Valdez and Velez, I, I thought it, it, it kept your interest. So, I don't know, man. I'm an advocate for boxing, man. I I, I understand a lot of the the, the backstories and the and, and the and the challenges, and um, I think Top Rank um, did a commendable job, and um, we'll go from there. Hey, I've already stayed too long, man. Um, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. Bite down, boxing. Don't let them count you out. Peace. Have a great day.